if you're watching this episode, what does it mean? Well, it means I'm in Ohio and I've been busy <laughs> trying to settle in. And I didn't have time to get up this another episode of what I've been doing. So enjoy this. I'm going to answer some questions because I'm telling you what, some of these questions are so good. You're going to learn a lot. So please watch it all the way through. These are some good ones. Here's a letter, a question from Chris Creates. Hi, Lee. How do you get ventilation if it's hot at night? Do you lower your windows? windows? And if so, how do you keep the bugs out? No, I do not lower my windows at all because, yeah, no, I, I don't want to get vandalized in the middle of the night. How do I get ventilation at night? I don't. <laughs> I don't, not in the summer. And it, it, it's hard. It really is. But I'm not going to do that. I could put, I have screens that I could put up, but that just, it, it doesn't seem good. Somebody could just, yeah, no, I wouldn't feel safe. So what I do at night is usually by nighttime, it cools off a little bit, except in Tucson. Tucson in the summer does not cool off. Well, I wouldn't be here anyways, because it can get up to 100, 110 degrees. But even at 90 degrees in the summer, if it was only 90, that would actually be kind of cool. Um, but in for some reason is in Southern Arizona, the heat is so retained here that it might get maybe 85 in the deep of the summer. And that's about it. But in higher elevation, it will cool down in the evening um, during the, the early morning hours. Not a lot, but it does. So what I do is I have all of my products that I use to keep cool. I keep this handy. And a lot of times I just park it here on the side. So I just grab it. I spray down. I have a sheet that I cover up with. And that's maybe in the middle of the night, I may have to take the sheet and cover it. Um, when I'm falling asleep, a lot of times what I do is I just spray myself down and I'm in my underwear and I just spray my underwear and soak it with water. And so, and then have a fan going, which is why I have multiple fans. Oh, I have two fans and I use my power stations a lot. And it really, those fans really do take on, um, a lot of power, you know, to keep them going all night long. So yes, I do have to have power and I do have to zap up my power stations big time and I usually and I'm not going to be in Tucson so I can't like drop them off at my daughter's house here would you power this up for me no um sometimes I actually have to get a hotel room so I can take them in and power everything up when it gets really dire okay so there's your question or there's your answer right this is from Cassandra you you who <laughs> okay mini v and lee are you you are awesome <laughs> okay i can't even read right i was wondering do you have keepsakes or photos etc if so where do you keep them any photos that i have are on my phone that i own are on my phone what i did even before i became a nomad I started, I think I was getting the inclination that I needed to do this. I was being guided by a higher force. I went through all of my file cabinets and I made separate folders for each one of my children. And I have four children. And at that point, I went through everything, the keepsake things. I had saved a few things, not everything. But I saved a couple report cards for my kids and little letters or um, that they sent me uh, just to me. Like I would wake up in the morning because I had to work and I would wake up in the morning and there might be a little letter there from one of them that said, I'm sorry, mom, I didn't mean to yell at you. Yeah, again, again. <laughs> And, uh, you know, things like that. And I thought they were so cute. So I saved things like that. And things that they would draw. Um, all of my children were very, either they were poetic or they were um, artistic, you know, um, in drawing and things like that. So I saved things. But as far as photos, oh my gosh, we had so many photos. Because I was also into photography. And I had a really nice Nikon camera. And 
I was really into black and white photos. And I was constantly setting up um, scenery or backdrops and telling my kids where to set and what to do. I've got so many black and white, really nice black and white photos of all my children and <laughs> and their and their friends because they had a lot of friends come over a lot and and just spend a few few days with us and then my kids would then go to their house and spend a few days and they kind of went back and forth well i divided up all of the photos and i tried to give everybody in a sermon at least i didn't give all the pictures of my oldest son to him i tried to give pass them around to other children and then um, this, I did the same. I gave them the bulk of them, but then I kind of passed around a little bit. And as far as my photos go or ancestral photos um, of my, my um, ancestors, I kind of divided those up the best I could. But the bulk of them I gave to my oldest child because she was very, well, not, that's not entirely true. Um, I did, I, I sort of gave the bulk of them to her, of me, because when I did go to Cincinnati, I thought, why am I carrying these photos of me? That's ridiculous. That takes space. So I actually left them there, but that's what I did. As far as keepsakes go, um, before I became a nomad, my daughter and her husband and my granddaughter transferred to Cincinnati. That's when they left which was ultimately the reason that I went to, um, became a nomad. And I sent the furniture that she wanted, I sent with her because a big Northern um, moving truck pulled up in front of, in their house and packed him up because he was working for um, a large corporation. And they were gonna move him uh, for free. So I thought this is a good time. She wanted that, um, some of the keepsake furniture. And so I sent it with her. But my other children got to come in when I became a nomad and took all the other stuff. So they got a lot of other, uh, the bulk of keepsakes, the bulk of it. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, just knickknacks and, and antiques and things that meant something to me. But I had nice things. They weren't expensive things, but they were, um, they were unusual things. As far as my artwork goes, those are big keepsakes. I drove those to Cincinnati. I wanted my oldest daughter to keep them. And she could then pass them out. They're very fair kids. They all get along very well. But I knew that um, she would probably, she had a bigger house. And so I actually had to travel with those. It was weird sleeping back here. Um, at night when I was traveling the first time across country, you know, I, I was kind of packed in here a little bit, taking things to her. And I really wasn't experienced yet, so I was carrying more than I should have. But yeah, I had all that. I had to take everything out of the frames. Oh yeah, that that was big. I had some nice frames, but they had to be taken and, and carded without frames. And I had a lot of drawings, charcoal drawings, um, professional color pencil drawings. Yeah, <laughs> there were a lot of, there were a lot of things. There were at least, I would say 30 pieces of art that I have. And they're um, all over when I walk into my daughter's house in Cincinnati. It's like my own private little museum. <laughs> it's my little uh, art show. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, that's basically the only art that's on their walls because there's so much of it. And a lot of it she really hasn't even put up yet. They're stored Okay, so that's what I did. Do I carry them? No. There's nothing here. Why would why would I? They were going to get them anyways, right? If anything happens, they were going to get them anyways. I had fun with them. I had fun creating them. I had fun taking the photos. I had fun with that. But my life is different now. The only piece of art that I actually kept that you could tell what I loved is my Yes Rock. You want to see my Yes Rock? Here's my Yes Rock. When we rewind
Okay, this is from Aussie Hillbilly. Hey, oh, an Aussie Hillbilly. Oh, mate. Well done. Great video. I'm not upgrading my van because it's so stealthy. No stickers. Exactly. That's my extra advice. You don't want to be profiled. Keep it clean and tidy so it blends better. Well said. This wasn't a question, but it was a reminder keep the stickers off of your car. Now, a lot of people say, oh, put one of those Thule, um, uh, I forget, I know sometimes, you know, I, when I'm, I'm, I'm real improv right now. So what are those called? They're carriers that you put on top of your roof. I don't even want one of those. I really don't. Um, I want to look like everybody else. I just, I want to blend in. This is from Brenda K. She says, thanks for another great video. I have a couple questions and concerns. One is that I need to know more about minimalism for sure. And I'm sure I'll keep a storage unit, but hoping to keep a small one. Oh, sure. Yeah, you don't need a big one. Um, yeah, because a lot of times you have bins, you can stack them up, you know, or you can even put a um, shelving in there. You know? Okay, so second is when I have a lot of my stuff in my SUV, Every even now I worry about even going to Walmart, etc., and leaving the vehicle unattended. I guess you've answered that in window tinting, but for whatever reason, I'm still stressing that a lot. Okay, well, let's answer this now and go to the next one. Yeah. It's gonna concern you at first, but guess what? I also, I have window tinting for sure, but I do, depending on the area and depending on certain, uh, yeah, the area and my gut feeling is I usually put up all of my front wind window coverings. That way nobody knows. See, the thing is being stealthy is they might suspect, but they don't know for sure. That's the key issue. And as far as my window coverings, because um, two days ago, I put up my, the video about um, being my secret hiding place and all my window coverings, because that keeps you stealthy. That some of you said, and I've had it said before, oh, everybody knows, the people know you're in there. If they did, really? Because I don't know how many times I've got all of these covered and somebody will open their door and slam it against my car. And I go, they jump. Yeah, they do. They jump. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. okay. Yeah, because I'm right here and I can do that. You know, then they, I, they, if they thought somebody was in here, they wouldn't do that. So obviously, a lot of people don't know somebody's in here. They just see the blackened out windows. And a lot of people in Arizona have that. But I don't know how many times I got somebody that doesn't care. Or what they do is they're, they're kind of a big person and they lean against my van and, and literally I'm going like, whoa, my van kind of goes back and forth. Yeah. I mean, I can feel it. So I look out like, why are you doing, you know, don't touch my van. We're not supposed to touch each other's cars. So, uh, yeah, the only thing I can say is you're going to have to get over it because guess what? You got to go to the store. <laughs> you just do. Park in an area where there's a lot of people. Okay. And don't be obvious about it. You know, don't have stickers all over. Don't be obvious. Just put up before you get out, put up that side of your window coverings. And then when you get out, you can put up the one cover that goes on the, on the driver's side of the front. Yeah. Just put them up. Don't worry about them. I would make sure that you have uh, your uh, second row seat windows down because, um, I proved that they could have a camera and put it real up against the window and it will show everything. 
in there. It'll be a little blurry, but the, it'll show what's in there. So now when I go to the store, I keep, I actually keep these down a little bit more now because I proved that they can actually see that. So, so what's the rest of your questions? Another thing I wanted to ask you about using your links when I go to buy on Amazon, but you haven't heard me say it very often. Okay, let me say this about that. I am an Amazon influencer. Oh my goodness. Yes, <laughs> big deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I give you a link and it's in video descriptions, or sometimes I put them in comments if I'm talking about something, but if you go, if whenever you're going to buy something on Amazon, here's what I want you to do because I get a little something, something. I, it depends on what it is. It could be a luxury item like jewelry or that you buy, and then it's a different percentage. Or it might be like a power bank or something for your home or something or clothes. They're, it's all different. Okay, so what happens is when you go to order on Amazon, if you really want to support me, um, you could do this for me go onto one of my videos and go into the description, go into the description. It's, it's a, um, it's real easy to do. It's, it's there. If you haven't figured out, just start clicking some buttons underneath the video. I think what now it says, it says more. It used to be a little carrot sign, but now it says more. Click on that and it'll bring my description down. Go down just a little ways and you'll see a link. Now, guess what? Guess what? It doesn't matter what link it is, although you can look at the links I do have if that's what you want. But you can actually click on a link. Those are my links that's associated with my account on Amazon. Once you go through the link, it's like walking through a door. It's walking through my door. This is Mini Van Lee on it, right? So it's in my store and you go in there then you can go shopping for whatever you want. Put some, type something in. But as long as you first went through my door, then above that you clicked on, it says search, click on what you want to see. And you find what you want. Well, guess what? You can put it in your cart. And if you buy it within 24 hours, that's it. It has to be within the 24 hours of putting it in your cart. And you purchase it and you're in your account and you purchase it. I get a little something, something. Depends on what you bought. It's not a lot, but what happens is it adds up. It just adds up. And the reason I haven't mentioned it much lately is because it takes a long time to describe it. But I will maybe um, once every two, maybe twice a month, I'll mention it. I should put that on a schedule so that y'all know because I have a lot of new, hello, um, new subscribers. Yeah. So that's how that works. Now, what happens if you went beyond the 24 hours and you think, whoops, I want to give Lee a little something, something to help her support her. What you do is you take it out of the cart, find, go in my video and find another one, another link that I've offered in my video description and go through it again and put it back in your cart. You're ready to buy it. There you go. There you go. There, and just do it all over again. So I know that sounds like a hassle, and uh, but I appreciate if you go through the hassle because it does really help me, okay? So thank you for reminding me on that. Okay, letters, okay. This is from Greek, okay. Speaking of questions, talk more about that limo tent and what it looks like from the outside and where you get it and there it is stuck permanently. How do you do that? This isn't stuck permanently at all. I'm going to lift it up. This is a, it's a, a static cling. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of jagged at the bottom. I cut it really bad, but that's what it is. I can leave the link for that in comments, okay? And I'll re remember to put it in a video description also. And I bought it from Amazon. No, it's not on there permanently. No, I wouldn't want it on there permanently. Well, nothing really is on there. If you take, 
your car to a window, professional window tinting place, which I did have on my previous minivan. It's, you can see out a lot better. It's, it's a better view. And I, you can put limo tinting back here. You just can't put limo tinting on the, the two sides or your windshield. Unless you have a doctor's excuse. You can get a doctor's excuse for a I don't know about limo tinting for the front, but you can get a doctor's excuse for very dark. For maybe the next darkest. Um, because if you're really sensitive in your eyes which I kind of am, I probably should go do that, then they will do it. But you have to have a doctor's excuse. Otherwise, many places, unless you do it yourself, they won't put it on, right? Okay. Um, but that's what that is, and I'll give you. And you have to cut it, you know, and you have to put it on yourself. Okay, let's get in a high Lee. You always look so nice. Can you please share exactly what you use for cleaning, cleansing, and makeup? Well, I can do a makeup tutorial, but this, I use CeraVe. This is, a, it, this is a little small one. I have a larger one that I pump um, to keep. Um, and when this gets low, I, I get it from my larger one. Um, it's a my hydrating facial cleanser. That's it. That's what I wash my face with. But I do use, I think it's Dove. These are pieces. These are cloths, makeup remover. Yeah when I wear makeup, which I do a lot now. The one of the reasons, and when, in my earlier videos, I don't wear makeup. Oops. I didn't really wear makeup. Here, let me put that back in. Um, I really didn't wear a lot of makeup all the way back. Um, I just didn't, and, and I, for years I didn't wear makeup. When I was younger, I did. But I realized in filming that I, when my eyes looked so washed out, when in my earlier videos that either I had sunglasses on or you could barely see my eyes because I don't have a lot of eyelashes. And so I, it, it, they just look washed out. And, and so I realized that I, I tried some uh, eye makeup and I thought it looked a lot better. You can see my eyes, they, they're more defined. More defined, yes. <laughs> and, so, and so I really got into it. I do have a lot of eye makeup now. A lot of liners, different types of liners that I've tried. And if I didn't like it, you know, I don't want to throw it out because it's, it, it can get expensive. I get my makeup at Sephora. And, uh, yeah, that, it's a great place. I've talked about it before. It's really a wonderful place. They have so much. It can run expensive, but it, it's really, it's a nice place for your hair and your makeup. But that's one of the reasons I wear eye makeup. When you're on film, I mean, sometimes if I take my glasses off, I go into a restaurant and you might think, oh, she's got so much eye makeup on. But you don't see all this eye makeup. It doesn't look so bad because I'm on film. It's totally different when you're on film. I will, here, I'm not going to talk about this because we're running late, but I will mention this. I have been accused of using a filter. Um, no, I'm just using my camera <laughs> and I'm not using any app uh, filter. I think... TikTok, TikTok offers an app that you can use while you're filming a TikTok. But that's totally different. That's for a short little TikTok or a short, you know. No, um, I don't use an app. This is what you see is what you get. Um, yeah, the, every line, everything is right here. See, this is it. There are no filters on this. But I do use filters on my thumbnail. And who doesn't? I mean, seriously, come on, everybody, if you're, if you're anybody or if you're any, if you're going to use a filter, um, on, on a thumbnail, because that is the, that's the cover, that's the cover page, right? And, and any magazine, any, um, like a trailer or a poster for a movie or whatever, it, that's called professionalism. Yes, I'm, go, I'm, I'm love graphic arts. So yes, I do use filters on my thumbnail. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I mean, that's art. That's um, that's professional art. That's advertising. I'm advertising that this is what I have because not only do you who follow me see it, but other people to draw uh, new people in. Which, by the way, I I've noticed the last month that I'm not I'm getting very little of my um, episodes shared. So if you could share, maybe post it on one of your social medias, whether it be um, just click share 
copy the link and post it on maybe if you use um, X, formerly Twitter, or Facebook, or whatever. Um, if you could share that, it really gets the fingers out there and it moves it out and, and brings in new people. Um, and that's a way to support me also. But um, no, I want other people to see it too. That And I, I, I am a van dweller. I am a nomad. And I guess I do live in my van full time. I mean, this is my home. And I've lived this lifestyle for seven years. I don't have a regular home that I secretly, after I film, I run into my house. That ain't happening. I don't have the money for that. <laughs> I don't have the money. I have a storage unit and that's where I keep some of my stuff. But I live here. And I think most of you know that. Um, but just because, I mean, just because I live in my van doesn't mean that I'm just gonna wear flannel shirts and put my hair up in a bun and wear murmur caps. And no, that's, that's not me. That is not me. And I, I am, I am just me. And I'm a little different. I understand as a van dweller, I might be a little different. Although there's, there's some pretty gorgeous van dwellers out there. You know what I'm saying? But I just am me. And no, there are no filters on this. This is me. <laughs> the wrinkles and all. And yeah, I mean, and little sunspots and blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is me. And, uh, and I'm not going to apologize for that either. No, I don't use a filter. Thumbnails I do because I'm a professional. <sighs> there you go. <laughs> and I love graphic arts. Okay, well, I think we're running. Um, it's, I think this is going to be an unedited. I'm not going to edit this at all. I'm just going to put this up. And if you're watching this, that means I am in Ohio and I'm just trying to settle in and get busy. I think my daughter has something planned even for the day you're watching this, if you are. And yeah, I mean, so yeah, editing. Hmm. And I want to, you know, run around and tickle my grandkids and chase them and, and make them squeal. Yeah. And I decided that my, my grandson, because I probably won't get to the gym, I'm just going to keep picking them up and I'm going to use my muscles that way. Every time I walk past him, I'm going to pick him up and put him down. He's probably going to go, ah, <laughs> but that's what's going to happen. He's going to be my new weights. And uh, my granddaughter, um, yeah, I'll probably chase him around a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty feisty grandmother and uh, I don't let him uh, get by. I don't, it's not that I, I just, I don't discipline him unless they're going to be stupid. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, I, um, I want activities going on, you know what I mean? And I love to, and I love to tease them and I love to hide from them and I love to scare them. <laughs> oh yeah. I love to scare them. I remember, um, I love to scare people. I remember poor Paul. He, I always scared him. He goes, Oh, you give me a heart attack. I would, I'd see him coming and I'd hide and then I'd jump out at him. I don't know. It's a, it's very childish, isn't it? <laughs> it's very childish. Okay. So, um, I love you all. And I, the next video, I promise if you've seen this, the next one, I promise will be footage of whatever has happened to me in the past two days. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So use some Amazon links, okay? And I got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway. That's on Amazon. Type in Minivan Lee and it will pop up and you can support me that way. And go to minivanlee.com for products or if you want to give me a gift. Okay, go out and have a wonderful day. And I'm sure I'm having a wonderful day too. So bye. Okay. <laughs>